Welcome to the Hercules Tire Mental Health Moment. Uh, we're joined here today by Maddie Homey, who represents Big South Student Athletes on the National Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Maddie, tell us what that means. The National Student Athlete Advisory Committee is an organization with student athletes from across the country in Division I institutions that represent each of their conferences, respectively. So I have the pleasure of representing student athletes from the Big South Conference within that group. It is an incredibly important job and a very meaningful job to me to be able to speak on behalf of Big South student athletes, but also student athletes collectively is so important. And I think many student athletes when they're in their day to day and they're just going to practice, they're playing games, they don't really feel like they have power, they have a voice, but they do. And I think that's one of the biggest things that the Student Athlete Advisory Committee or SAC empower student athletes to use their voice. You know, on the campus level, you see a lot of SAC bodies doing community service initiatives, running events on campus. And these are all great things. But the heart of what we do, especially nationally, is to improve the student athlete experience. And so being able to be in the room with athletic administrators and various faculty members at institutions across the country is so powerful that we can then talk as a group and go to our individual committees and use our voices to represent all student athletes and hopefully make better experiences year after year. Excellent. Would you say that that student athlete voice has um, increased recently or is it the same or where would that kind of sit right now? A hundred percent. It has increased. I think that you hear a lot of people say the student athlete voice is more powerful than ever. And it's true. I mean, looking at recommendations from the transformation committee and things happening at the national level, student athlete voice is going to continue to grow and you'll see student athlete representation on more committees at the national level, at the conference level, at the institutional level. And I think that is going to further show student athletes that they do have a voice and that they can be a firsthand participant in improving their own experience. And so I do think that voice is growing. I think another part of that is the media. You see things all the time uh, when maybe something happens. Student athletes are using their voice and we can't run from it anymore. It's it's here and it's time. Things are definitely changing and have changed a lot in the last couple of years. Yeah, I think absolutely. You know, I think we've all seen a lot of major changes in college sports the last couple of years with name, image, and likeness and the transfer portal and other things. But it seems like coming out of SAC, uh, a lot of the recommendations are focused specifically on, specifically on mental health initiatives. But how would you say those meetings go? How do those conversations look as they center around mental health? You know, that's another thing that has definitely changed and evolved over the last couple of years. I think we've gotten to a point where everyone understands that mental health is a serious concern. I think we're still in the weeds of figuring out what that looks like of how we improve and support student athletes and their mental health, but we definitely care about it. And so in the national SAC room, it's kind of started out these conversations and discussions of what can we do? And I mean, we started with just some brainstorming sessions and ideas were thrown out there left and right. And a lot of them are probably not feasible. And I think you also look at student athletes have very different experiences. I was in the big South conference versus SEC and ACC, some of those schools, our experiences are not the same. Our resources are not the same, but there is a commitment to mental health and services and providing resources to improve student athletes' mental health. And so I think we've seen it grow from, okay, what could we possibly do to, you know what, let's get in front of athletic administrators, the people making those decisions and show them how much we care and how much we need support in mental health and see what comes out of that. Let's work together. Let's collaborate on that. And so if you look at the Transformation Committee's report and some actions that are going to be moving forward in the next couple months, you will see that mental health and a commitment to student-athlete well-being is embedded throughout all of those documents and all of those recommendations. And so I think that's where we've really grown the last couple of years. It's It's, you know, not that ground level, oh, maybe we could do this, maybe we could do that. But we're really getting to a place where change is going to happen. And everyone understands that they're committed to that. The institution needs to be committed to that. Student athletes will not let it not happen. They're not going to allow change not to happen now. We talk about that voice of student athletes and it's there, it's in writing. And I think change will continue to come and hopefully will help make some situations better for student athletes. 
Yeah, I think definitely change is coming and, and positive change for sure. You mentioned the, the Transformation Committee report. Can you give us a little bit of a peek behind the curtain of what some of those recommendations are and what uh, kind of the future for student athletes might look like in the near future? For sure. There is a commitment in the recommendations from the Transformation Committee to provide a direct path to mental health professionals for student athletes. Now that of course can look a little bit different at each campus and maybe in every conference, we're still figuring out what that's gonna look like, but there is a commitment whether that's using on-campus resources that already exist, using third-party providers, student athletes will have more access to mental health professionals. And I think further than that, you know, coaches having mental health training, maybe even just more support groups. One thing that used to happen on Longwood's campus for a couple of years, we had Mindful Mondays. Maybe more institutions will kind of jump on board with those sort of initiatives and just more events and programming that helps their student athletes deal with mental health and more resources. And so ideally, I think we're going to see more staff committed to mental health for student athletes. It's just a matter of what that's going to look like. Well, I think that's great. That recommendation, I think, is really going to be meaningful. I think we see, um, you know, with some of the stuff that's happened over the past couple of years, we know, we know all college students, not just student athletes, are at a high risk um, for, for mental health illness and other issues and the challenges and the stresses that they deal with on a daily basis. And I think we also recognize that student athletes have a unique uh, set of challenges. So to have somebody specialized to those needs, I think will be a huge step in the right direction for serving our student athletes. Maddie, unfortunately for us, um, you're nearing the end of your time representing the Big South Conference as our national SAC chair. Since you started back as a freshman, what kind of changes have you seen in this area as, as we look to try to improve our services? There have been so many changes. Again, I think I said, you know, we're at the point where change is inevitable. I think everyone knows that something has to happen. We're not totally sure what that's going to look like. But I also think there is this realization that we can't be complacent. And so it might be something that we need to review regularly. Where are student athletes at? Let's have better conversations with them. And the student athlete voice being in more of those committees and in being in more of those rooms is going to ensure that we do continue to evolve and change. The problems facing me as a student athlete when I started as a freshman are not the same as those freshmen now. And I think that's going to continue to happen. You know, we grow, we change. When I was a senior, a fifth year graduate student, I was not the same as a freshman. I can recognize, I can understand and see those differences. But I do know that student athletes on my campus were more involved. Student athletes nationally were more involved. That room of national SAC members is extremely dedicated to student athletes. And no student athletes across the country really see that. But there are individuals in that room that work so far beyond what they're expected to do. You know, they're a student athlete too. They are busy. They are dealing with their own mental health struggles and their day-to-day -day academics, athletics, all of the above. But they set aside extra time and commitment to improving the student athlete experience for all. And I think that's where I've seen the biggest change is that more people are on board with that. It's not just national SAC members. It's more individuals at the conference level. People want to be involved. They want to get into that national SAC room and be involved in that. And I think more individuals at the institutional level understand what's happening. We've started town hall meetings for national SAC where any student athlete across the country, any division one student athlete can come and attend and ask questions, hear what's happening at the national level. There's buzz around the transformation committee, the changes happening in division one and college sports. You mentioned NIL and so many other changes with transfers, et cetera, that have happened over the years. We are in a completely different place. And I think we're all trying to figure it out. But from my freshman year to now, I've seen so much growth and a commitment to finding the best possible outcomes. It's not selfishly what's going to work for the administrators and the athletic directors like, oh, that would be such a pain for us to have to deal with mental health so services for our student athletes. We are at a point where everyone is committed to that. And I think the next few years are going to be so telling and very positive changes will come out of that. And I'm excited to see it. Yeah, no, I think you hit the nail on the head. Exactly, Maddie. The, the challenges today are different than the challenges even three or four years ago. Um, and, and the challenges in three years are going to be different than they are now. 
but but what you didn't say, Maddie, is I know you wouldn't, but you're one of those leaders in that room, and we appreciate the time that you've taken and the the hours that you've dedicated to serving our student athletes. Uh, I think it's really been fruitful, and we're starting to see the fruit of the work that you put in. We appreciate Thank that. You. Thank you. That has been your Hercules Tire Mental Health Minute. Maddie, we appreciate your time today. We really appreciate the work that you've done for this. I know all of our student athletes are better because of it. We look forward for your next chapter. Thank you.